Question so far. I'm going up here. Question so far. Okay. Next one. Electron affinity. All right, electron affinity. Now, just general idea, give you an, an idea what, uh, what it is exactly. <coughs> so, lithium in a gas phase, like that, okay? Here's the add, add energy to it, that's ionization energy. What hap what's going to happen to that electron? What's going to happen? It's coming out, right? That's ionization energy, so it's coming out. Someone's going to take it. Let's say it will be. Fluorine is right there. Right? Take that electron <laughs> when fluorine and gas phase form interaction with uh, uh, sorry, form interaction with the uh, electrons. You release the energy exothermic process. And that energy we call electron affinity. Right? EA, electron affinity, will tell you how uh, how strongly the gaseous atom Sorry, one more time. EA is an energy that uh, a gaseous atom release when it accepts electron. So this energy will tell you, big energy, right, large energy will tell you how strongly it attracts electrons. If you don't understand, take a look at lithium and fluorine. Okay? Lithium and fluorine. As we know that fluorine usually except one electron become negative charge. Alright? So how strongly it is an attract electron? Take a look. 320, uh, 328 kilojoule per mole. Compared to lithium, we know that usually lithium has become positive charge. I right? become positive lithium, not yeah, negative lithium. But when we force it to uh, to accept electron, it just releases only a small amount of energy. That's not that strong. Okay, compared to fluorine. Fluorine releases 328 kilojoules per mole, but lithium releases only 60. It's not that stable. Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, EA, electron affinity, tell you okay, how strongly interaction between proton of an atom and a new coming electron. Okay, more EA, more interaction, more attraction. Okay, now, trade. Right, let's take a look at the trade. Give you a general idea. If we have, uh, take a look at the, uh, the group, down the group. All right? I'm going to add one electron to the group one. We have lithium, sodium, potassium, and rubidium. Who will attract electrons more strongly? We have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium. Who will attract electrons more? <laughs> Big or small? Too small. Right? Because electron closer to nucleus, closer to proton, right? So we attract a lot stronger than at the bottom. So EA will be very high with the small atom. With the small atom. Okay? So small atom, electron is closer to nucleus and higher EA. What about down the periods? Yeah, across the period, sorry. Pretty much the same size, right? Pretty much the same size, but what's the big difference again? Number of proton. Okay, let's see. Number of proton. More proton, more interaction. You attract electrons more. So if you compare between lithium and fluorine, as we saw in the previous slide, fluorine attracts electrons a lot more than lithium. Okay? If they ask you, what about helium? Oh sorry, what about neon? Neon has more proton than fluorine. Should be a bigger or smaller compared to fluorine? Why smaller? Why smaller? It's inert gas. Okay? It's already stable. If you do electron configuration of neon, it's already full. We can't accept any more electrons. So, group number eight, inner gas are too stable and do not accept any electron. So, EA is zero for group number eight. All right, EA is zero for group number eight. <coughs> On the test, 
how do you deal with this? Yeah, you can go start with the size first, right? If you get an add-on at the same size, oh, we take a look at profile next. But this is my tip. Closer story, higher I rest a uh, higher PA, very productive. Alright? If the add-on closer to, to win, the closer, the higher EA. Let's do that. Okay, let's try. If we give you cesium, fluorine, potassium, helium, sodium, and oxygen, how do you rank EA? My first slide and you the table. Yeah, for sure, fluorine is the highest. Alright? Fluorine is the highest. Now, who's the second highest? I'll take a look. I'll take a look, take a look. Alright? So we have fluorine. Oxygen is the closest. So oxygen is number two. Number three, sodium. Four, potassium. And cesium and francium afterward. Let's get closer to fluorine, higher PA. Okay, let's do that. So we should get trained like that. That's a trend. Now, let's try on your one. Give you germanium, oxygen, argon, silicon, and carbon. First, find them where they are in the period of the table. Okay? And closer to fluorine, higher EA. Yeah. Looks like 
energy, but it's not an energy. It's not an energy. It is ability of an atom to attract electron. Unlike Ea, okay, Ea is an energy that an atom release with except electron. But En is the ability of an atom to attract electrons. Add a little bit more in a chemical form, in a core value form. Alright? It will look something like that, alright? Remember a little bit, fluorine has the highest electron, neg uh, electron negativity, highest En in the periodic table. If you connect hydro uh, hydrogen and fluorine, who's stronger to pull it onto itself? Who's stronger? <coughs> yeah, fluorine, higher EN, right? Fluorine has high, uh, higher electron negativity. We pull electron toward itself, so it goes to the right. <laughs> now, fluorine and oxygen bond together with covalent bond. Oxygen is uh, one of the electron negative atom, but it's, it's second. Fluorine is the highest, oxygen is the second one, right? So who wins? If you pull electron left to the right, who wins? Yeah, fluorine, go to the left, right? So you're going to get electron cloud, go to the fluorine side. Okay? So, to rank them, right? Then you look at the periodic table. To rank them, this is first, sixth highest electron negativity. I want you to memorize this first. Thing. Fluorine, okay, F, O, C, L, N, B, R, S, right now, first six. Right, I force you to memorize this. F, O, C, L, N, B, R, S. Yeah, first six, highest electron negative, uh, electron negativity in the periodic table, okay? Hydrogen has the lowest electron negativity comparing with uh, non, between non-metal. But it's still higher than metal. And you can write hydrogen and metal, that's fine, but make sure you can write the first six. F, O, P, L, N, B, R, S, memorize this. Uh, now, when you compare uh, electron, uh, electron, sorry, when you compare between electron, ne electron negativity between atoms, here yeah, we, we do this first six first. Okay, the first six highest EF, F, O, C, L, N, B, R, S. Other than that, <coughs> closer to fluorine, higher electron negativity. Right, closer to fluorine, higher electron negativity. Now, let's try. I give you nitrogen, silicon, lithium, cesium, beryllium, and sulfur. Yeah, we start with fluorine. Fluorine is the highest. Yeah, do, you see, uh, do you see the first six highest electron negative atom? F, O, C, L, N, B, I, S, random first. Other than that, closer to fluorine, higher yield. <coughs> All right, you should get something like that. Yeah. If you can see, nitrogen and sulfur are among the six highest electronegative atoms. Right? So we have nitrogen and sulfur. Other than that, closer to fluorine, higher EN, we have silicon, beryllium, lithium, and cesium. Okay, you want to find the, uh, an atom in a periodic table a little bit. Now, let's find your own. Give you silicon, aluminum, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, and bromine. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How do you rank them? Right. Make sure you can find the first six first. Alright? Do you see any first six? Bromine and sulfur. 